Grade 8 Math, number 11.1F. We're talking about transversals, angle measures, and a parallelogram in this one. And I'm going to move on to the next topic. So to find unknown angle measures, we need to rely on the knowledge that we have that right angles are 90 degrees, okay? Complementary angles will total 90 degrees when put together and that supplementary angles will total 180 degrees, like a straight line. So when you put those angles together, they make 180. And we can find any unknown angle measure when we have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal if we're given one angle measure. The second supplementary angle plus that one angle measure are going to total 180 degrees. So what I'm saying is if we know the measure of this angle, then we'll know the measure of this one because it's on a straight line and they have to total 180 degrees to be supplementary. Okay, so we also need to remember what corresponding angles are, same side interior angles, alternate interior and alternate exterior angles are, because we don't assume to just know what an angle measure is just based on how it looks. We have to have proof from a rule. So we have to say it's that angle measure because of alternate interior angles. See? So we've got to have proof. So the definition of a parallelogram states that each pair of opposite sides is parallel. That's proof. That's a definition. See? So this is these two lines are parallel and these two lines are parallel. Now this can actually be like this. Just pretend we're taking off the edges here. Okay? Take off the edges and turn it into a parallelogram. And it's the same thing as this. If we know the measure of angle 1 is 75 degrees and the measure of angle 2 is 40 degrees down here, then we know the measures of angles 3 and 4. We know that they're 75 and 40 degrees because parallelograms have two parallel lines and the pink line is the transversal. See? Now it's also a diagonal. You're going to hear that said in geometry, that a line that is just bisecting a shape in half like that would be its diagonal. Well, don't assume these angle measures, okay? Make sure you have proof. Make sure you have a definition to back you up or some rule like corresponding angles. So let's take a look at this parallelogram, all right? This is the same thing here. All I did was I extended the diagonal line, that transversal, and I extended the lines for our parallel lines going this way, all right? So I made these dotted because they're not going to be that important, all right? A little important. So the measure of angle 1 is going to be congruent. Remember, an equal sign with a little wave on top means congruent. It means it's equal to. It's the same. So measure of angle 1 here is going to be congruent to measure of angle 3 because of alternate interior angles. That's the rule. Alternate interior angles, they're opposite sides of the transversal, like 3 and 6 or 4 and 5. They have the same angle measure. They're congruent, okay? So we know that the measure of angle 1 is congruent to the measure of angle 3 because of that rule, alternate interior angles. We also know that the measure of angle 2 is going to be congruent to the measure of angle 4 because of alternate interior angles, these two, the 2 and the 4. So if the measure of angle 2 is a 40, then the measure of angle 4 is a 40. See that? If the measure of angle 1 is a 75, then the measure of angle 3 is a 75. It has to be because of that alternate interior angles rule. All right? So, see this green dot here? If 3 is 75 degrees and 2 is 40 degrees, how many degrees is this angle where the green dot is between the dotted line and this line here. Can you figure it out? Well, that's a straight line, isn't it? So that's going to be 180 degrees. So if we add the measures for 3, which is 75, and 2, which is 40, we're going to get 115 degrees. All we have to do is subtract from 180, which is this whole thing on the straight line, and we get 65 degrees, and that means the angle where that green dot is, is 65 degrees. We did it through, like, process of elimination, didn't we? We added up these two and said, well, that's a straight line, so that's got to be 65 degrees. Well, guess what? What does that mean that this angle measure is over here with the green question mark? Remember, angle 1 is 75 and angle 4 is 40, and that totals 115. So yeah, 
The one with the green question mark? That one's also 65 degrees. That's an alternate interior angle, isn't it? Isn't that something? All we did was extend the lines for the parallelogram and we could see it. Now, this is a little bit ahead of what you might be doing, but I wanted to show it to you. Sorry about the focus. And some people might get some benefit from this, but I also wanted you to get introduced to the word diagonal. So that's a line cutting through it like that. And I just wanted to open your mind up a little bit, okay? So we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the angle measures of triangles in 11.2a. All right, I'll see you there. Bye.